गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग मैम मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग मैम मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग सो द लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट पार्लियामेंट राइट यस मैम यस वी स्टार्टेड द टू हाउसेस ऑफ पार्लियामेंट वन इज लोकसभा एंड द अदर इज राज्यसभा सो लोकसभा इट इज कॉल्ड एज द हाउस ऑफ पीपल लोकसभा इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज हाउस ऑफ पीपल एंड इट इज डायरेक्टली इलेक्टेड बाय द पीपल एंड एक्सरसाइज द रियल पावर ऑलवेज रिमेंबर इवन दो वी हैव टू हाउसेस लोकसभा एंड राज्यसभा द हाउस ऑफ पीपल एंजॉयज मोर पावर देन द काउंसिल ऑफ स्टेट्स so the lok sabha exercise or oh, real power than the rajya sabha and its maximum strength is 552 its maximum strength is 552 out of that 530 members are elected from states and 20 members from union territories and two members are nominated by the president from anglo indian community but at present its strength is only 545 out of this 545 543 are the elected members and the two members are nominated by the president okay so remember the maximum strength of lok sabha is 552 but at present it include only 545 members then coming to rajya sabha rajya sabha is called as council of states rajya sabha is called as council of states it usually elect indirectly and perform some special functions the members to rajya sabha are not directly elected by the people they are elected from the state legislative assemblies the most common work of this house is to look after the interest of various states regions or federal unit so the function of rajya sabha is to look after the interest of various states regions or federal units and it has not more than 250 members out of this 250 members 12 members to rajya sabha are nominated by the president from persons who have earned distinction in the field of literature art service etc you remember children sachin tendulkar was a member of rajya sabha Based yes, ma'am. On the uh, because his contribution to sports, so twelve members to Rajya Sabha are nominated by the president. So the maximum strength of Rajya Sabha is two fifty. Maximum strength of Rajya Sabha is two fifty, and out of that, twelve members are nominated by president. Twelve members are nominated by president. Rajya Sabha is a permanent body. Rajya Sabha is a permanent body. The Rajya Sabha cannot be dissolved. Lok Sabha can be dissolved, but Rajya Sabha cannot be dissolved. One third of its members retire every two years. A member is elected to Rajya Sabha for a period of six years, and one by third of its members are retiring every two years. So, how the uh, the two houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, Rajya Sabha is a permanent body. We cannot dissolve that body, but Lok Sabha can be dissolved. if the non confidence exist lok sabha can be dissolved but rajya sabha can't be do like that it's a permanent body and one by third of its members are retiring every two years at present only 245 members are there in rajya sabha so rajya sabha's maximum strength is 250 at present only 245 members are there uh, out of this 245 members 12 are nominated by the president and it's a permanent body it's a permanent body and uh, every members uh, one third of its members are retiring in every two years lok sabha lok sabha's maximum strength is 552 at present it include only 545 members then what are the important functions of parliament even though we have two houses uh which house is more powerful lok sabha or rajya sabha lok sabha lok sabha always remember it lok sabha is more powerful than rajya sabha then what are the important functions of parliament first one on ordinary bills both houses have equal power 
i think in the last year you studied about uh, the bill right in the uh, politics yes ma'am yes we are always presenting a bill in the parliament only after it it is passed by both the houses and also it was ascended by the president only it become a law so always we are uh, using the term bill okay if a bill is signed by the it is passed from two houses of the parliament and if it is signed by the president only it become a law till that time we call it as only a bill so any bill an ordinary bill can be presented in both the houses lok sabha or in rajya sabha a bill related to any issue suppose uh, it related to agriculture uh, children are you reading the newspapers now or watching the news yes i am watching today news. and all related to farmers Yes. Have you noticed it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, what are the functions of Parliament? Now, on ordinary bills, both the houses have equal powers. And in case of deadlock, suppose if one uh, house is passing the bill and other is rejecting the bill, what will happen? There will be a joint sitting of both the houses. a joint sitting will be there their members from both lok sabha and rajya sabha will be there at that time who will uh, succeed or ma'am majority vote ah majority vote is from where lok sabha or from rajya rajya sabha lok sabha lok sabha yes because the majority of the members are in lok sabha 543 members are in lok sabha and 245 members are in rajya sabha so if there is any deadlock joint sitting will be there and if the bill is passed by lok sabha again it will be passed in the joint sitting because the majority members are from lok sabha so the an ordinary bill both the houses have equal power in case of a deadlock a joint sitting of both houses is called where lok sabha have a numerical majority okay so if an ordinary bill suppose the agricultural bill it is passed by lok sabha and it is rejected by rajya sabha so what will happen a joint sitting will be called and again uh, the voting will be there and at that time who will succeed lok, lok sabha. sabha because uh, the members majority of the members are from lok sabha so the bill become passed okay so an ordinary bill it can both the houses both lok sabha and rajya sabha have equal powers and in case of a joint deadlock a joint sitting of both houses is called where lok sabha have a numerical majority then on many matters on money matters lok sabha enjoys more power than rajya sabha money bill can be presented only in lok sabha for an objective type question uh, your mcq it will be a question in money matters lok sabha have more power than rajya sabha money bill can be presented only in lok sabha money bills can presented only in lok sabha and rajya sabha they can only delay the bill up to maximum 14 days on money matters lok sabha enjoy more power than rajya sabha and rajya sabha can delay it only by 14 days after 14 days even though they are send it back if again lok sabha is passing and sending it they must accept it and lok sabha will not consider their suggestions they can only uh, give some rectification but it depend on lok sabha whether they want to accept it or reject it okay so always remember on ordinary bill we can both the houses both lok sabha and rajya sabha have equal powers on ordinary bills but in case of money bill who enjoy more power lok sabha lok sabha on money bill lok sabha enjoys more power than rajya sabha rajya sabha can delay it up to maximum 14 days the rajya sabha can delay the bill up to maximum 14 days and if they can suggest some rectifications but it depends on lok sabha they can either accept it or reject it and lok sabha control the council of ministers through non confidence motion okay 
So Lok Sabha controls the Council of Ministers through non-confidence motion. Have you heard about non-confidence? Lok Sabha can be dissolved, but Parliament, uh, Rajya Sabha is a permanent body. We cannot uh, come up with any type of non-confidence to Rajya Sabha. But Lok Sabha, it controls the ministers through the non-confidence motion and uh, Rajya Sabha does not have this power. So this is important. What are the functions of Parliament? First one, on, ordin on ordinary bills, both houses have equal powers. In case of any deadlock, a joint sitting of both houses called where Lok Sabha have, has numerical majority. And in money matters, Lok Sabha enjoy more power than the Rajya Sabha. That is, the money bill can be presented only in Lok Sabha. Then Lok Sabha control the council of ministers through non-confidence motion. And Rajya Sabha does not have this power. So that's all about the first political institution that is parliament. So first is why do we need a parliament or how parliament exercise political authority on behalf of the people. It by through law making, control over the government, especially in money matters and it is the highest forum of discussion and debate. Then we discuss what's the difference between a parliament and a legislature. Legislature is the body of elected representative at the state level and parliament is a elected body of representatives at the central level. Then the two houses of parliament or the two chambers of parliament, one is Lok Sabha and the other is Rajya Sabha. Lok Sabha is a lower house and it have elected representatives. It is elected for a period of five years and it is more powerful, especially in money matters. Always remember, money matters, Lok Sabha is more powerful than Rajya Sabha and its maximum strength is 552. At present, it includes only 545 members. Coming to Rajya Sabha, the elected, the members are elected from the elected representatives of each state. The elected members of each state assembly are electing the members to Rajya Sabha and they are elected for a period of six years. It's a permanent body. One third of its members are retiring in every two years and its maximum strength is 250. At present, it includes only 245 members. And out of this, 12 members are nominated by the president from various persons who have earned a distinction in the field of literature, art, science, service, etc. You remember children Manmohan Singh? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Manmohan Singh? Yes, ma'am. That we will discuss later. Even though Manmohan Singh is not a member of Lok Sabha. Normally, our prime ministers are the members. But uh, Narendra Modi is a member of Lok Sabha, right? He is an yes, MP to Lok Sabha. But Manmohan Singh was an MP in Rajya Sabha. He was not an MP in the Lok Sabha. Then coming to the functions of uh, parliament. On ordinary bills, both the houses have equal power. But in money matters, Lok Sabha enjoy more power than Rajya Sabha. And Lok Sabha control the council of ministers through non-confidence motion. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. The next is, after legislature, the second organ of the government or the political institution is executive. Executive. Executive means the parliament is making the law and the executive is the doing the execution of law or implementing the law. Who uh, include in the executive? Okay. You know any executive? No, ma'am. No. Who include this executive? Who are included in this executive? Ma'am, ma Louder. MLA? No. Who are implementing the laws? MLAs and all are coming under the legislation. Who are implementing the law? Police. Police. Very good. Police is there to implement the law. Then? Um, 
see well, at the time of corona example huh? not we the people who are not wearing mask fine is there right yes ma'am now i think it is 500 rupees yes ma'am who decided that police modi in the state who decided that ma'am chief minister pinarayi vijayan ah chief minister yes so the ministry level they take a decision and who is implementing that is pinarayi vijayan is coming to check that whether all are wearing the mask police no police, police. through the civil servants they are doing it right so at the ministry level they are taking the decision and through the civil servants they are implementing it so the executive include there are two types of england executives are there is any difference between a police officer and a minister yes what is it ma'am a minister is only taking decision ah a police is making the decision okay like and a minister is a maximum for how many years 6 years 5 5 6 The election is up to five years. So maybe next time, if they win the, if they are able to form the government only, they will form the government, right? If they form the government only, they become the minister. Next year, if the LDF government came into power only, K K Shailaja become the health minister, or Pinarayi Vijayan become the chief minister. Yes, sir. So executive is divided into two types. One is permanent executive and the other is political executive okay but what happened to the police officers after 5 years they will change no no yes no ma'am no they, they will, will get transfer so what is the difference between a political executive and a permanent executive then is pinarayi vijayan or uh, a police of a police ips officer is a political executive pinarayi vijayan pinarayi vijayan right. so the political executives are elected for a particular period of time right yes sir but what yes, about sir. a permanent executive for 5 years they for are five years, for five years if you get a government yes. all the government servants are coming under this permanent executive ips officers ias officers and all the government servants are coming under this permanent executive so they are elected for how many years they have a fixed tenure right nowadays till 60 years suppose our ashik become an ips officer and he can be in the post till the age of 56 or 60 i think now it is 60 years right or you will be changed after every 5 years no till retirement okay that is the difference between a political executive and a permanent executive the term itself how the answer political they are elected for a fixed period of time after that they may change but a permanent executive will be there till their retirement age Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So the one which is elected by the people for only a specific period of time is called a political executive. So what is the difference between a political executive and a permanent executive? The one which is elected by the people only for a specific period of time is called political executive, and it signifies the government. and the one where people are appointed on a long term basis is called permanent executive or the civil service we call them as the civil servants okay so the difference children don't forget please understand the term itself political executive means they are elected by the people for a fixed period of time maybe for 5 years they are forming the government but a permanent executive if anyone is trying for getting an ias post or ips post or ifs post why you are what you are aiming civil servant we are calling that exam right like that right yes ma'am civil, civil service civil service exam. exam civil service exam that is you become a civil servant so the civil servants are the permanent executive and the people elected for a fixed period is called as 
political executive so the one which is selected by the people for only a specific period of time is called political executive and the one where people are appointed on a long term basis are called permanent executive or the civil servants then who are political executive the same thing what we said our prime minister our chief minister our other ministers are coming under political executive the executives who are elected by the people for a specific period are called political executive and it include prime ministers council of ministers etc and they are answerable to the people for all the consequence of their decisions they are answerable to the people see in the case of uh, shiva shankar you remember that related to gold smug uh, gold smuggling yes ma'am yes ma'am did anybody is asking questions to him is any uh, yes ma'am media is going behind shiva shankar or they are asking questions to the chief minister to whom they are asking to the chief questions? minister the chief minister to the chief minister because they are responsible to the people in the case of sprinkling that time at the time of covid you heard about that term sprinkling so yes ma'am at that Sprinkler. time also who is answerable chief the minister is asking chief minister to, to the chief minister that means elected representatives are answerable to the people not the civil servants so political executive they are who are elected by the people for a specific period of time and they are answerable to the people for all the consequence of their decisions they are taking the decisions and they are responsible for the to the people and they are more powerful and take all final decisions the final decisions are taken by the political executive clear who are political executive yes ma'am so executive who are elected by the people for a specific period are called political executive and they are answerable to people for all the consequence of their decisions and they are more powerful and they take all the final decisions then the permanent executives they are the salaried with civil servants who are appointed on a long term the ias officers ips officers ifs officers not only them all the government officers are called as civil servants among them the top most rank are ias you know that in the civil service exam yes ma'am you are writing the civil service exam so the persons working in civil service and they remain in the office even when the ruling party changes their tenure of office is fixed when the party changes they cannot be changed from the post they will be there because they are elected for a fixed period of time maybe suppose ashik got his ias at the age of 25 till 60 years he will be there right ashik yes ma'am or our hadi got an ias till the age of 60 he will be there he can't be changed as per the discretion of the uh government his post will be there maybe positions may be changed but his post will be there and, and transfer ah transfers or sometimes we can appoint but uh, transfers will be there then they are not answerable to the people that's why i asked you about shiva shankar did he answerable to the people no ma'am no but the minister is answerable to the people then they are less powerful and they don't take decisions instead they assist the political executive in carry out day to day administration what is the main duty of this permanent executive they are assisting the political executive in carry out their day to day administration okay so that's the difference between a political executive and a permanent executive the executive who are elected by the people for a specific period of time are called political executive 
and they are answerable to people for all the consequence of their decisions they are more powerful and they take all the final decisions and coming to the permanent executive they are the civil servants which include ias officers or ips officers and they remain in the office even when the ruling party changes and their tenure of office is not fixed is fixed they are not answerable to the people and they are assisting the political executive in carry out the day to day administration then why do the political executive have more power than the permanent executive can you say the answer why they are more powerful ma'am because they are uh, making uh, law hmm. like why they are more powerful they are making law okay see children so if you want to become a minister or uh, not a minister even if you want to become a representative even to the now the election is there right if a person want to win the election they need the support of the people which one is difficult getting the support from the people or passing an exam i am passing an exam ha ah, that is difficult <laughs> that is easy dear to become a civil service officer is easy compared to become an mla because if you want to become an mla you must need the support of the people to any institute if you are working if you are sincerely working for a one and a half years definitely you will pass civil service exam not only civil service exam if any exam if you are working sincerely with a maximum 2 years maximum 2 years if you are dedicating uh, entirely to that and if you are working it you will get it but is it possible to become an mla like that no no definitely no you will know that an mla or a civil servant you always remember civil service exam is comparatively easy than become an mla because if you want to become a representative of the people you need the support of the people that is the answer for this question why does the political executive has more power than permanent executive as per the protocol mla and minister is more superior than the civil service officer but when we are saying that and because because of the reason power. is in a democracy who is supreme people president people is supreme in a democratic form of government people is supreme so the ministers is elected by the people and empowered to exercise the will of the people on their behalf they are answerable to the people the ministers are answerable to the people for all the consequence of her decision now where is our hmm, in state thomas isaac dr thomas isaac our the finance minister related to kifbi so many uh, issues are there related to kifbi and all and the minister is answerable to the people he is uh, in the through the mass media and all he is giving answers to the people not the civil servant and the ministers take all the final why the ministers are taking all the final decisions because the answer is simple because they are answerable to the people they are elected by the people to exercise their will on behalf of them so the ministers are taking all the final decisions and the minister decide the overall framework and objective in which the decisions on policy should be made the ministers are not expert in any matter so they have an assisted with an expert so a minister how the chief minister have a uh, so always remember this point why the political executive is more powerful than a permanent executive the reason is very simple in a democracy the will of the people is supreme and the minister is elected by the people and they are exercising the will of the people uh, will of the people on behalf of them and they are answerable for all the consequence of their decisions that's why the minister take all final decisions the minister decides the overall framework and objectives 
in which the decision on policy should be made even though they are not an expert in any matters they are taking the decisions why they are taking the decisions because they are elected by the people and the ministers are there to empower the power on behalf of the people and they are answerable to the people for all the consequences then coming to the political executive who is the most powerful among all the political executives prime minister prime minister prime minister prime minister is the most in a coming to a state it is chief minister and for the state a country it is prime minister prime minister is the most important political institution in the country and the who is appointing the prime minister ma'am president president the president is appointing the prime minister and did the president a prime minister have a fixed period of time yes ma'am the members are elected for a five years but is it necessary that a prime minister should be there for the five years no no if suppose in between any non confidence was there or if the prime minister is resigning the entire government will be dissolved in crisis mm. the entire uh, government will be dissolved so there is the prime minister does not have a fixed tenure he continues in power as long as he remain the leader of the majority party or the coalition that means till they have confidence in the parliament he can become the prime minister okay till they have confidence in the uh, parliament they can become he can become the prime minister and who is the current prime minister of india ma'am narendra modi narendra modi and what are the important functions coming under the prime minister he chairs the cabinet meeting then he coordinate the work of different departments his decisions are final in case of disagreement arise between different departments he exercise general supervision of different ministers all ministers are working under his leadership he distribute and redistribute the work to ministers he has the power to dismiss the ministers and when the prime minister quits the entire ministry will quit if prime minister is giving a resignation the entire ministry will be quit so these are the major functions what are his role he chairs the cabinet meeting if the meeting is there he is chairing the meeting he coordinate the work of different departments prime minister is acting as a coordinator then his decisions are final in case disagreement arises between the department if two departments any uh, uh, conflict is there what prime minister is saying that may be the final one then he exercises general supervision of different ministers and all the ministers are working under the prime minister and prime minister distributes and redistribute the work to the ministers and once the prime minister quit the entire ministry will quit okay what are the powers of prime minister he become the advisor of president he is the head of the government chairman of planning commission and assigns the portfolio to the ministers and change them if necessary okay next is related to cabinet ministers have you heard about cabinet ministers क्या